Shalom and good morning. Uh, it is Sunday, May the uh, April. It's Sunday, August the eighth. I'll get the month right eventually. Um, already out here in the garden this morning, shooting a couple videos um, for a service review. Um, back here, makeover. Check out that video. It's um, it's not very long. Probably going to cover the same thing in this video. Um, and. Yeah, and the garden tour. So, um, basically, what we have here is, as you can see behind me, uh, we got the stump ground, stumps ground, right here. And uh, there's more detail in the the um, backyard makeover video. Um, here, let me spin you around. Um, so, this stump was ground. Actually, all the stumps were ground, and that one has a big hole. That one has a big hole. We need to fill them in. I'm not going to go into detail. I already did that in another video, so uh, actually two, because <laughs> one was a review. One is for um, um, yeah, backyard makeover. So let's look at the garden this uh, this week. Now there is a few things different. Uh, we did pull out. Sorry for spinning you around. We did pull out the spaghetti squash and. Um, I plan on coming out here later and harvesting some seeds. Let's see what else is different. I thought there was something else. Pulled out a couple tomato plants. Yeah, I pulled out the, the black crim and the um, yeah, the ones that weren't doing really good, the, the black and purple um, tomatoes. I pulled those out um, and I'm gonna remove that fence post. Although I might just keep it up because it's keeping uh, birds away. We did find one um, hornworm this week that was already dead. Um, the wasps had gotten to it and you know killed it. Uh, it was sitting dead on the leaf. Um, I've seen some evidence where they've been, but I've not seen any others. Um, I'm thinking the birds may be getting them, so there is a use for those birds in your garden. <laughs> um, and that's the only thing. I mean, the crows really, to my knowledge, are not bothering, um, the crows and the ravens are not really bothering the garden, to my knowledge. Um, I haven't seen any damage unless that's what's been plucking my, my toma green tomatoes, but I don't think so. Birds usually go for the red ones that are soft and juicy and full of water, so I don't think that was um, what it is. So let's, let's have a look. The trees are looking beautiful. I still haven't got that planted up. I also want to come out here this week and get some some seeds planted. These trees right here are looking kind of sad. And something's something dug this one up and ate it. <laughs> um, this right here is a oh, what do you call it? Crepe myrtle bush. Uh, like this one which is in bloom it's got red blooms on it uh, my neighbor over here gave it to me yesterday well, Friday so these need to come out this week all of this is going to come out this week and I'm going to um, all this <laughs> all these kale plants are coming out this week and I'm going to replant um, I'm going to pop the seed heads off of these and so this is a lettuce that I really like and these because I really do like this lettuce and this is what the seeds look like you see those little tufts it's kind of like a dandelion it has the well let me see if I can get one that's actually open and ready to pull okay do you see those little seeds right there on the end of the the puffs so those are the seeds underneath these little, and these are to help it get carried away with the wind and replanted somewhere else. So this is going to get cleaned up to, uh, this week, and I'm also going to get my other tomatoes planted in here that I have sitting in the windowsill. Um, let's see. I don't think there's a lot more. 
Uh, we've been harvesting quite a lot of peppers and the sweet pepper, the sweet peppers and the habaneros and the cayenne. Oh my gosh, have we been harvesting those? <laughs> um, I have over a gallon that I just dehydrated whole, the cayennes, that I just dehydrated whole and they're in a gallon jar just waiting to be used. Um, we're gonna dehydrate some and turn it into a powder, which we use a lot of cayenne. We use a lot of cayenne powder in pretty much everything, but it's really good in my cayenne cocktail. Yes, I'm gonna plug it. Um, check out that video right here. Um, somewhere along in here. Um, at the end of the video, I'll, I'll throw up a link right there. But uh, yeah, we use a lot of those cayenne pepper because they're a vaso vasodilator and they are uh, really uh, beneficial for your health. Um, so this bed right here is the ones that we started from seed and they are, as you can see right here, just now putting on some blooms and uh, have some small peppers. The beans, oh my gosh, I have to I have a lot of beans that I need to process. These are the yard longs at the back, the green yard longs, and then I have the purple yard longs right here, which have already um, died back because I haven't been picking them and blending them to go to seed. But the green yard longs, I'm harvesting those every single day and they keep putting out. I have, um, I have over a gallon in the house that I need to get canned. Um, now I do not have a pressure canner. I want one, it's not on my must have list right now, um, but I do want one. <laughs> um, so I talked to my mom yesterday because I remember as a child, you know, we would cook off the canning um, on a, a outside stove. Um, it was like a chimney built with uh, racks um, like a barbecue pit but um, it had the, the wide steel rungs that went across that would hold heavy weight so um, we would cook off in this huge water tub that you used it to water animals um, and we would have it loaded down with blankets like four or five blankets to keep the um, the cans from touching the bottom and the side because you know a sudden burst of heat will make them bust so uh, we filled it up with water we covered it over the um, the cans and we would process it now uh, I talked to my mom yesterday no the day before yesterday and she said that um, yes she did can green beans out there um, before she ever got a canner um, she learned how to do it from her mother who learned it from her mother so <laughs> it's a long tradition and um so they they would can it green beans on the thing now to can green beans in a water bath it um she said it takes three hours to make sure that everything is good and it'll stay sealed so three hours of a hard rolling boil um or a soft rolling boil for three hours and that was that's how you can can, can water bath can green beans so back to the garden um anyway i have a huge lot of green beans that i need to process so that they don't go to waste because we don't eat a lot of green beans um just because they have to be cooked and we don't cook a lot <laughs> we uh we like to eat raw mostly but we've gotten quite a, a lot of the sweet peppers and the hot peppers. Um, this one right here is the one I told you that I, whoops, sorry about that. These plants right, these tomato plants right here are the ones that I pulled out. And I'm thinking about removing this. Um, it was just put up there temporarily. temporarily. It's not um, latched down or anything. It's just stuck in the ground, staked in the ground um, as a temporary support for the tomatoes. So I did take those tomatoes out and I would like to plant something along the side here. Um, some fall crops, winter crops. This week is my plan. Um, these are some more, and somehow we have a cayenne back here 
the seeds got mixed up and that's a chili pepper and these are chilies this is a fresno it's just now starting to bloom um, the Santa Fe we actually harvest a couple of those um, this is it, what it looks like this one's starting to turn We actually harvested a couple of, this, of the Santa Fe last week, and those are actually really good. They have a, um, a slight sweet taste to them, and you don't get the heat until the end. Um, I really like those. Um, let's see, what else, what else? Right here, we uh, tore down the monstrous um, spaghetti squash plants that were right here. They were, um, hit really hard by the beetles and they killed them squash beetles they killed them and then I also had um, some vine boring so far I've not seen anything on these watermelons um, come here sweetheart let's wind you up right here uh, so far, I have not seen any bug pressure on these yet, Preja. Um, this is a vine peach. Um, we have another watermelon, which is actually outgrowing the first two. Which is kind of interesting. This Kajari melon tried to has decided it's going to um, kick off and... The weird thing about it, bird poop. Um, the weird thing about it is, it is as long as the. Know, it took a long time for it to actually kick up. There was nothing over here, um, and this one right here is a Kajari melon that's trying to get going. Um, really weird that it took us so long to get going. I actually had a Tigger melon two tear melons on this uh, last week uh, but they did not stand the test of time they um, withered in the heat now off of the spaghetti squash we actually got um, six spaghetti squash off of that they weren't really large um, but um, perfect size for one person so Look at these peppers right here. These are the pepperoncinis. Aren't they beautiful? Um, my Roma tomatoes, I haven't harvested any more ripe ones off of it, nor have I seen, like, there's a blossom in it right there. Um, nor have I seen a dead spider. Okay, what was I saying? <laughs> I haven't seen any of the large ones that were here. Anytime you get these, this is a fungus, okay? Remove it from your garden. Okay, anytime you get blossom end rot or some kind of fungal disease on your plants or on your um, fruit, remove it immediately. That way it doesn't stay in there and infect the others because fungus will spread through pores, uh, spores. And you don't want, now one thing I've noticed is the bed that I haven't really had any issues in whatsoever is the long bed. And I used um, cedar chips in the bottom of it last year or at the beginning of this year. Um, and cedar chips are really good at deterring fungus. So I'm wondering if that could have something to do with it. I'm going to give that a try um, again next year in all of the beds because it didn't harm anything for sure. Um, they also deter a lot of bugs as well. So I'm going to give that a try in all of them next, next year. So whatever was still into the tomatoes has not come back. They must have gotten stuck in the netting. So the netting is working to keep it away. And as you can see, there's there's no damage from hornworms right here. Uh, 
I have one little one little plant that's still trying to struggle to survive with the cucumber. I pulled them all out except that one and it was looking healthy but now not so much. And if you can look right here, you'll see why. There's a vine borer in there somewhere. So, apparently I'm going to have to come out and pull that out and kill the vine borer. I know you can just... Um, operate on them. Seeds don't cost that much. It's not producing out anyway, so um, I don't think it would survive just because it already looks really half dead. So I'm not going to worry about it. Look at our cayenne bed. It's a blaze with red. I mean, it's still loaded down with peppers and we've harvested I'm thinking at least three gallons or more off of the, these plants right here. Now there's two more plants in this bed um, that we've harvested a couple peppers off of, but these are really prolific. In um, we've not had any in the cayenne bed get uh, cross pollinated. <clears throat> we have had one in this bed get cross pollinated. We've had one in that bed get cross pollinated. And we've had a pepper in that bag get cross pollinated, and one in this bag get cross pollinated. And now we know why Yahweh does not want you to put your plants this close together because it uh, corrupts the seed. And that's weird. Let me show you what I'm seeing here. Anyway, Yahoo doesn't want you to plant your seeds there uh, because it corrupt your plants. Oh, it's hard to sit it still right there. Okay, that's not me moving. That's the sunflower. There's uh, ants eating something underneath the leaf. Underneath all the leaves, I'm assuming. assuming it's some kind of egg sack or something. Look at this thing. Look at those pretty little flowers. And it's getting pollinated by the bee. If it's not me moving, it's the flower. Ouch. <laughs> Okay, I won't get your picture then. I did find, um, one day this week, uh, I did find a praying mantis in the cayenne bed. So that's the first one I've seen this year. I saw one last year also. And before that, I haven't seen a praying mantis since I was a kid. Um, so it's good to know that some of the predatory insects are coming into the, the garden that are going to help control the population, although I could have used it on my um, spaghetti squash before the squash bugs killed them. So, look, here's another tiny little sunflower. That is the tiniest little sunflower I've ever seen. It's very, very small. Sorry about that. There, that's better. It's very small. I've never seen a sunflower that, that tiny, but it's the sunflower from this angle. Isn't that majestic? I had a sunflower one time grow 18 feet tall. It reached the roof of my house, uh, and it was, um, it was a one-story house, but it had a, the basement underneath. And it reached the top the roof. This is kind of wicked. 
I would love to zoom in on that bee, but the sunflower's moving in the wind. There's a couple more heads that are getting ready to open up right there, too. <clears throat> I didn't have a lot of sunflowers this year. I actually planted all the seeds I had. I'm hoping these will actually open up and I can harvest some seeds out of them. These are the giant ones. I'm supposed to produce the giant heads. Oh, look, they're starting to open. Check that out. to get that one. There we go. And then there's that one over there as well. These tomatoes are dead, but I haven't pulled them out because they're trying make a comeback. Hang on, it'll clear up eventually. When all else fails, pull back. <laughs> so you can see right here, it's got new growth. It's trying to make a comeback. I don't, I've not harvested but one tomato off of it. I'm not counting this one. <laughs> um, I only harvested one tomato off of it. That was good. All the other ones had blossomed and rot, and I believe the seeds were bad from these because they were sick from the get-go. That will do it for our garden tour for today. Um, there's there's a few other things, but um, this is the main part of the garden. It's small. It is what it is. Um, my strawberries are dead from the heat. Yep. So we have to replace all my strawberries. Let's see. Okay. They have not fared well in the heat. Even the mint has not fared well in the heat. Of course it's in a tiny pot. But these are not and they are not doing so well. Look at that little maple tree right there. Anybody want a maple? That's all right, I'll stick him in a pot and then we'll plant him in the ground. And he'll be one of the trees that we replace from the ones that we, um, so that'll do it for our garden tour today. Um, not a lot to see, um, not a lot has changed except for the stumps getting pulled out and some plants getting pulled out. Um, I do plan on harvesting some seed this week and planting some seeds for fall. I want to plant some kale and some cabbage. But those are going to have to be covered by a net to keep those stinking butterflies off of them. The white moth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did quite severe damage. But those are cold loving plants. So they should do well once it starts cooling off, which it hasn't yet. But you do want the, to get the plants started. I don't have a greenhouse yet. Maybe too hot to start them in a greenhouse. Um, so going to try it in the garden and we'll see what happens and I will keep you updated. So that'll do it for today's video. Yahoo bless you and keep you and give you shalom. Until next time, Yah bless.